if you um, if it pans out, but it looks like it's going to be that it's with all the benefits of the longevity and the low production cost and no pain and things like that. Is there do you see a reason that not all cars in the future will be mimicking that? Not only from Tesla but from other manufacturers too. And my second question on the side drive is um, how do you create the crash structure in the front when you have such a stiff exoskeleton and something that doesn't slice up pedestrians if you crash into them? Those are my two questions. Thank you. Okay, all right. So there's, there's two questions, and uh, you cut out there in a sec every once in a while when you move the microphone too far out. So I'm going to repeat it. So one is um, do you think everybody else will go to an exoskeleton kind of product design? And then the second one was, um, what about crash worthiness? What happens when you plow into something? Okay, so every car manufacturer has something that looks kind of like a bumper, but really is an absorber of a tremendous amount of energy. Uh, front and back, I don't think you're gonna have too many problems because when we start to design a car, that's the very first thing that we do is figure out how crash worthy it's going to be. Not just from the front and the back, but rollover, uh, small offset, which is the heart is called SORB, and it's the smallest, it's, sorry, it's the biggest issue for designing a vehicle to make sure that, that you, if you hit something with your, your driver's side uh, uh, hits, a, hits a telephone pole right where your wheel is, okay? Well, in the olden days, those used to come climbing right through what used to be called the firewall and right into the cab, and you would have a bad afternoon. Those things, now we, we figured out how we can get rid of that problem. Um, and so uh, there's, there's things called tusks, cutoffs, um, diverters, all kinds of different tricks to get that out of the way. They're all built into every car. And so from a crash worthiness standpoint, the Cybertruck will have no problem at all, period, in that area. As far as going to exoskeleton, um, exoskeleton is what I'm doing. We're working with that para, it's common knowledge. Um, and the Aptera has an exoskeleton. It isn't made out of, out of stainless steel, it's made out of carbon fiber. And why did I wanna have carbon fiber? Because carbon fiber is like a stone. It has no, it doesn't change its characteristics at all, and it has no induced stresses. The guys from BMW on the i3, they led the planet in technology with carbon fiber. The tragedy was the car was so bloody ugly, no one would buy it. And that, that was an internal discussion and an internal decision that was made to try and kill anything that had to do with electrification. Unbelievable, but until you've lived inside of uh, corporate politics, like at the, I was, uh, <laughs> I never quite made it there, but I was scheduled to become, uh, to go up to the first level of executive at Ford. And I'm telling you what, the, the stupid chicken shit stuff that they used to talk about would just curl your hair. You couldn't imagine, you couldn't imagine the, the kind of conversations. And I'm sure that that's what happened over at BMW. So there you go. I, I think that exoskeletons are gonna be coming out. Uh, and by the way, most aircraft uh, in the future will be exoskeleton as well.